when you go into every trade deadline, you, you have a plan ahead of time and then life happens and sometimes your, your plans get altered. But certainly I think to arrive where we were going into the trade deadline, we really wanted to, to uh, create some opportunities to get draft capital, to get some trade exceptions, to upgrade our talent. And I think we were able to accomplish all those goals yesterday. Certainly the hardest thing about trades is like I've said this before, you're not just trading a person, you're trading their family, all the things you went through together. So before we wanted to get uh, get going and Kareem, I'll answer all the questions is, I just want to say thank you to those players that are left here. You know, Montrez, you know, certainly Aaron, Spencer, Davis, you know, those four were, were part of this, uh, this season and certainly with Davis years behind uh, and, and all the things that came with it. We had some great times, some great memories. We went through some very difficult times uh, over the last couple of years with COVID certainly and, and everything else that came up. But uh, those were four great wizards, great people, great teammates, great family men, and we miss them. And I wanted to just say thank you and shout out to them before we get started. So thank you. Go ahead, Kareem. <laughs> Thanks, Tommy. The preamble's um, over. <laughs> no, that was, that was perfect. It set up some things. Uh, you know, the, and like you said, said, you know, some of those guys weren't with us, uh, weren't here very long. But I want to ask, you know, specifically about Porzingis. What about it? What about that deal? And what about him specifically um, made it worthwhile pulling the trigger there? You know, I, I, uh, I can't say this enough. You, you can't be afraid to take big swings. When you get an opportunity uh, in the summer with free agency, when you get an opportunity with trades, especially a trade deadline, some things present themselves to you. And Jerry West told me when I got this job, don't ever be afraid to take a big swing. You know, there's only going to be so many opportunities to get talent. And to get talent, you have to give up talent and understand that. We acquired you know, three of the players that went out yesterday weren't with us last season. They were new players and they were part of our go forward. But, you know, the trade deadline gives you unique opportunities. And, and with Chris Stapps, I think he's the part I was mentioning earlier where we think we upgraded our talent level here. You know, he, he's a former all-star. He was having an excellent season. Certainly there's injury history there. We have a fantastic medical staff. We have a fantastic plan in place when he comes to town uh, today. And, and we sit, we're, we already started mapping it out last night on the, on the phone. Uh, I was familiar with him years ago. I used to visit one of our former players in Sevilla in Spain, and he was one of their teammates. So I've known him since he was a young man, watched him play in international competitions and certainly followed his career. So we're real familiar with him. I think there's an opportunity there uh, here to, to play the style of ball that Wes wants to play with his teammates here. I think you're going to see uh, great things for us. He represents so many different areas of, you know, he's a, he's a floor space and big who can shoot the, the blood off the ball and give us a lot of opportunities to, to score different places, but he's also good rim protection. And I think if you study the league, you know, defensive presence is a very big thing. Rim protection is a big thing. Being able to space the floor is a big thing. Shooting three is a big thing. And he, he captures all that in one. So there was a great opportunity there. But uh, certainly to get him, you had to give something up. And one quick follow-up. Um, how much did Brad's situation kind of influence everything that went on yesterday? And, and did you discuss, uh, I know he was in surgery, but I don't know how much of a conversation you had, if any, with him about um, some of the decisions that were made yesterday. You know, when you go in, as we're heading into this week, I bounce stuff off of Wes. That, you know, I certainly mentioned to Bradley some of the things we're looking at, but at the end of the day, I have to do my job. Those guys do their jobs and we all, we meet collectively. Um, certainly, I think I have enough history with Bradley and with Wes that they, they trust us to do what's best for the Wizards. You don't go trade by trade because, quite frankly, a lot of these things happen. That opportunity with Dallas yesterday happened uh, probably 15, 20 minutes. You know, I have to go back and check my notes, but it came together very quickly after our several days of conversation about something totally different, as that's what happens on trade deadline. And uh, so it probably gave us about 20, 30 minutes till the deadline, actually till three o'clock uh, before that thing was really shook on. So things come up and I cannot say enough about the staff around with the Washington Wizards. Uh, our front office is, is fantastic people. They were over prepared. We would, I, I'm a big preparing person. So we went through so many different iterations uh, during this week, you know, by the time yesterday rolled around, it's like watching fruit rot. You know, we started out pretty rested and ready to go. And by the time Thursday rolls around, 
you're feeling it. You haven't slept much and, and you've talked yourself to death, all the different ideas and concepts that you have, hoping that maybe we can hit on one. And, and we were getting closer to three o'clock and that it didn't look like we were going to have a whole, whole lot. And then all of a sudden that one hit and then it, it kind of added the excitement to the day. Thank you. We'll go over to DA. Hey, hey Tommy. Um, why do you think it didn't work with Spencer here? Um, you know, I don't know if there's enough time that, that elapsed to say it didn't work or, or it, it certainly wasn't what we thought it would be as it started. But I'm a patient person. That was a long contract. You know, we, we, we committed to him. He committed to us for at multiple years. So it's not like you can't, you can't bail on something when it's not working over 50 games, maybe a longer sample size to give you a different picture. But for me, it wasn't as much about, hey, we got to move Spencer Davis. It's what we were acquiring. Mm -hmm. and, and understand this, and, and I didn't mention this earlier because uh, I was too busy preambling, Kareem, I apologize, but DA, we were not going to send out draft capital. We weren't going to send out young players in any deals. You, you asked, did, did what happened to Bradley change anything? That, that certainly was uh, something that I wanted to make sure once we, we, we knew that Bradley is going to be out for the year and he's going to have surgery, and certainly we weren't going to take the big swings that maybe – could have been there uh, and actually weren't, but, you know, even just lining some stuff up, it made a lot more sense to, hey, let's, the three Ds of this season didn't change, defense, development, discipline, those are the things that we really want to harp on. And we didn't want to use our, our young players unnecessarily, you know, hey, everybody's here to grow and be part of the Wizards. But this business is talent acquisition, talent development, talent acquisition, talent development. You, you got to keep pushing until you get your roster right. And it really is difficult at any time to say, hey, this team's arrived. I, I think, you know, when you look at it, the only constant thing in the NBA is change. You know, when you look at yesterday, what we have, uh, gosh, you go back to August 1st, 129 players been traded. You know, uh, 39 lottery picks have been traded. Since uh, I'm trying to remember my dates, DA, but but like 73 players been traded this week, you know, and, and 22 lottery picks this week. Mm -hmm. So that's a lot of players moving towns all in a short amount of time. The NBA is about change. So it's not about was this didn't go right with Spencer. It was, hey, there's a chance for us to get something, you know, and it wasn't a market correction or anything other than we, we went out and acquired more talent without really giving up any, we didn't give up any draft capital. We actually got a second round pick. Uh, we, we actually shortened our money and our financial obligations and opened up some cap space in 24, 25. I don't need to bore you with the financial details, but this wasn't a huge financial hit to us. It's actually saved us some money, but I, I think we got a, a very talented player. It, it, it leaves you kind of where you were last summer, which is there's a need for a point guard long-term. And I wonder, what the last couple of years have shown you in terms of how to get that filled in a way that will be long-term and be sustaining? Well, the one thing for sure, you're, you're right on that, but I think a lot of people go in thinking that, Hey, this is our long-term solution. You know, we had a, we've had a couple point guards come through here over the years that were phenomenal. And then life happens, injuries happen. It changes the trajectory of a yeah. franchise and some of the players in that franchise. You know, you go back when we saw in Davis, it was because we knew John was coming back the next year. And John made a lot of people a lot of money. He's a fantastic point guard, setting guys up. And a lot of shooters got paid because of John. Well, then John never played, you know, that next season. You know, Davis never had an opportunity to play with John Wall. And then we pivoted. We brought in Russell Westbrook. He was fantastic for us. Did a great job. Then we had an opportunity this summer. We got involved in the big deals that we did. And, and that netted us. You know, you look at Coos and, and Pope, they're both starting for us. And Trez was a big piece off of that. So Russ was gone. We had to find another point guard. And then there was Spencer. And, and hey, none of these guys are our forever team. That's just life in the NBA. I'm not saying we're going to find it and we'll make a solution with no plan, DA. We we're, we're certainly went into that trade knowing that we we're going to have to find a, a better solution at point guard this summer. But we have a lot of time. Uh, last I checked today is the 11th of February. Free agency's back uh, back end of, of June. So... We got time to put some plans together. I, I'm not saying this any other way, but I, I think we've shown a willingness to be very aggressive. We've shown a willingness not to sit still. 
we're going to continue pushing to make this team the very best it can. You know, my responsibilities to the Washington Wizards, to this franchise, to always make it the best place possible and not to sit still. And, and I know there's a certain amount of you got to let things kind of coagulate and grow. And we're, we're willing to do that. You know, you look, we have all the young players on our roster, 25 and younger. What we added yesterday actually made us younger with Chris Stapps. You know, obviously Ish, uh, bringing him back into the fold. That's a happy face everybody's familiar with. But really, those moves are pretty strategic in nature for, for the future. Uh, none of them are point guards. So that's our that's our focus for sure in the offseason. But I, we have a lot of games left to play this year. And that's very variable, very valuable information for us to watch. Uh, great opportunities for Wes. And, and like I said, we're, we're going to continue to try to win games. That's our That's our job. But in that pursuit, we want to see these players develop. That answer your question. I don't even remember what the hell your question was. Yeah, about point guards, we're going to get the point yeah. guard addressed. Yeah. Okay. All right. We'll go over to Chase. Hey, Tommy. <clears throat> um, I understand Chris Stapps has missed, I think, the last five games with a, a bone bruise in his knee. So, just what's the latest for that? And when do you think he could debut? Uh, he was going to play last night. He was slated to play tonight. It just, I think they, he might have felt, uh, I don't know, maybe a certain way as players do towards trade deadline. And maybe there was a possibility. I, we didn't discuss it, but he told me he's ready to play. So we'll find out. He comes in. He's going to get a physical. This is a big picture thing for us. We're not we're not looking to get him right out on the floor if he's not ready. But every consideration was made about who's coming in, injury history, everything. And uh, I, again, I, we're not afraid to take big swings. He's a hell of a talent. And we're looking forward to having him integrated here quickly. And how much did um, team chemistry factor into just the moves that you made? Was that a, you know, a, a, an element that you considered when you made these trades? I think certainly that's a, that's an element you consider every single day and you monitor, you know, it's the same team again, we're in February, so it doesn't really pay to talk about November and December, but it's the same team that started out 10 and three. And, and all we heard is how great the chemistry was, you know, you're, you're tied to your record. Certainly. And I think people deal with success a certain way. And sometimes success can have a success strain as well. And maybe we didn't do as great a job managing success early. But I do know we were 15 and 11 and COVID hit this team. And we really have been struggling ever since then to get our legs back under us. And just when we thought it was behind us, right, then, then Gaff gets hit the other day. So it's a reminder we're not out of that. That's not an excuse, but those are facts. You can check it out. Uh, we, we missed a lot of players playing during that time. We had some good wins. You know, if you look at some of the top teams in the league, we've we, we done pretty well against some of them. And I think we'll do well in the future. But what we really need to do now is reset. And the, the, the chemistry is going to be what you make it every day. And it has to be the players buying in. We can't come in and say, okay, God dang it, everybody be happy today. The players have to feel that love amongst each other, the brotherhood of going out and competing. Winning certainly helps. Uh, but, you know, I, I think certainly when, when things were tough, people, um, you know, adversity brings out a lot in people. And I, I think it's just our responsibility as leadership here within the Wizards. Certainly, hey, we want everybody to be professional, move forward. But you can't run from the fact, too, everybody's human. And some, sometimes players get frustrated. Coaches get frustrated. We have to deal with that. But, uh Again, I, I still look at the moves we made yesterday was for the betterment of the franchise, getting draft capital, trade exceptions, better talent coming in the door to help us for the future. That's really what this was about. All right, we'll go to Josh. Tommy, we know that uh, you uh, have an ongoing dialogue with Brad and his representation as you do with all of your players. Uh, given that uh, his, per his situation is so central to the franchise. What's your sense as to what his long-term intention is as it relates to the Wizards? Um, I, this is probably the first time I've, I've mentioned this to you guys, but I, I believe Bradley is going to be here moving forward. Um, I know this is news, but, but he and I have talked about it before, and he he's said that this is where he wants to be. So I'm not going to waver from that. I'm not trying to be a smart-ass Josh, but I just I don't know how many more times I can touch base on this subject that certainly we plan on him being here in the future. And if he feels otherwise, I'm sure he'll let me know, but we've been partnership with all of our players. You know, we're very transparent and 
sort of on the go ahead. We, we want the best players, the best situation for everybody to be successful. Players like Bradley don't come along very long, very often. And 10 years in, maybe I'm a little bit biased, but I saw last year an all NBA player who led the league in the scoring for most of the entire season. and was pretty amazing. And we changed the roster up. And certainly his responsibilities got a lot more this season with the ball in his hands and stuff. But he's playing through a lot of injuries, had a lot of things hit him during the season too. It's not the season that he wanted, certainly, but it's still pretty darn good. Uh, he led us to a lot of wins. And, you know, I, I do think that he, he's made it clear to me anyway, this is his intentions are still the same as they always were to help build this franchise up, help lead us to another, uh, to a championship ultimately. But there's no skipping steps. And I'm not going to sit here and say this team's ready to win a championship today. But the moves you make today can help you get there down the road. And we can't run from that. And we're not going to sit there and say, well, we'll just wait three years until we have cap space or anything. No, you got to keep trying to get better every day. And to acquire, to, to sit down at the table, you got to have chips to play. And that's all we're trying to do. Continue to do that. Continue to develop our young guys. You know, I think you saw a snapshot last night, uh, especially on that last possession, what Denny can do. Denny's a disruptive defender. Seeing Rui get back to who he was, you know, uh, of a season ago and certainly remember what Rui did in the playoffs. Uh, you're starting to see some of that come back. I think Corey's going to be a fantastic player with us. And those that's, you know, Thomas Bryant's getting his legs back under him. So you see some of the growth from the young players and you mix that with some of the vets that we brought in. I think Pope's been a great pro, stepped up at those free throws last night uh, to kind of seal it down for us. And, and, you know, I know what Bradley can do, certainly. You know, a big thing that we did earlier in the season was extending Daniel Gafford. And I think he's part of us going on to go forward. So, you know, I'm sure I'm going to miss somebody as a go down roll call, but I'm excited about the pieces that we have. I think Bradley is as well. But, you know, this, this is not just for, for today and trying to make anybody happy. We're, we're trying to build the very best team to win. And to do those things, sometimes you do have to make difficult decisions. And I, I think we've shown we're not afraid to make difficult decisions. We're not afraid to make change if it makes the franchise better. Not to worry, Tommy, you didn't sound like a smart ass. <laughs> and just if you did, give me a minute. <laughs> uh, we've heard uh, in these post games, uh, a lot of references by players to agendas, egos, etc. What have you seen in that regard? Or what did you see in that regard up until yesterday? You know, I think I saw a lot of frustration when, when you lose some games that you certainly should have won. I personally think there's been a hangover uh, after that, the Clipper game. I think a lot of people, you know, I, I try to tell players, man, don't, don't be pointing the finger, why don't you point the thumb? You know, sometimes you gotta say, hey, that was me. It was all of us. It wasn't this guy or that guy. And I, I think some of that is, you know, I have seven kids, I know how it is. Guys get pissed off and, you start to, it's always easier to blame somebody than it's to accept responsibility. I think that was on all of us. That, that one particular game, that wasn't the entire season. That's not what I'm trying to say. But there was a, there's a, again, that success strain maybe from early success. And I think everybody thinking, hey, we, we, we're, we're up here. And I don't think we were planning on going 10 and three every 13 games this year. But I certainly think we were better than our record. But, you know, Bill Parcells used to say, you are what your record is. So we're fighting like heck to get back to, to a level ground. And, and I, I think pursuit of winning is always what we're going to be about here. But in that process, like I mentioned, the rest of the season, hey, let's continue to develop, continue to get better. And certainly it's still there for us. I think we were better for the experience last year making the playoffs. Rui, Gaff, some of our young guys got a chance to get a whiff of the playoffs last year, and that was huge. And if that can happen again, you, you can't replicate playoff experience. You have to go get it. But in the meantime, hey, they're going to play in big games and they need to be in big games. You know, you're going to see because of the, some of the changes we made, DA pointed out, you know, the point guard position's open. Well, in the meantime, one of Danny's best attributes, he's a great secondary playmaker and he's a pretty good decision maker. DA chose, he, he can make a lot of decisions with the basketball. This kind of frees him up to do some of that. Now you're going to have to put your seatbelt on and live with some of the, sometimes there'll be some stuff that didn't go so well, but there's a lot of goodness there too. And I think that's a good thing for him. We're going to find more about these young guys because they're going to get pushed over a chair and have to do more responsibility. And that's a good thing. And I think throughout all this as a coaching staff, you know, this is their first year and our first year all together. I think you've seen some great development with Wes. You know, certainly the, the scars propel you forward. And, and again, we talk about the, 
you, you better understand how hard it is to get to the top. And, and you got to be able to enjoy the times when you do have some good days because the bad days when they're there, you got to convince everybody, hey, the storms don't last. They don't. There's a beginning and an end to those. And I think we're, we're coming out of a tough time for sure. And I think using after the trade deadline, the players, I don't have to text them to say, call me, you're not traded. Now I can just call them and they'll answer. You know, that's when you start to know, hey, people are back off the edge. Thank you. We'll go to Dave Johnson. Who's that? <laughs> hey, uh, Tommy, you were saying that, you know, all the preparation that went into um, the deal yesterday, but in, in talking about just how quickly it came to, when the week started, did you think you were going to be able to get at Kristaps Porzingis? I mean, last night was his poster night in Dallas. So this obviously, you know, came pretty quickly together. It's always ironic how that goes. Usually you play the team that you got traded from, you play them within a week. It's just, you're right. Some of these things are really ironic, but we dream big. You know, we rehearse, we plan, we, we put so many different iterations, every single team. We have trades that are lined up and, and, you know, unfortunately, I understand the business everybody on this call is, is in. There's a lot of stuff that uh, I'm just going to tell you, you might have been lied to by some people out there because there's a lot of rumors go out that have absolutely nothing to do with anything close to the truth. But regardless, you, you didn't hear a lot about the Wizards from us. Certainly, we don't, that, that's never been our style. And I was proud of that, you know, the Porzingis thing cracked late. But honestly, we've been talking about different iterations with Dallas over a bunch of different things over, you know, several weeks. And that's how this goes. I, I talk to teams every single day. And, and most of the time, it's just to talk about life or how your family's doing or, you know, trips we're going to go on or teams we've seen, talk about players in college, whatnot. But we do talk about our rosters an awful lot. And I'm constantly downloading what teams need, what are they looking for. And, and there's just that you, you, you got to know there's only so much talent in the NBA. Right, Club 450, it's a hard one to crack. These are the best planets on, players on the planet. But then within that Club 450, there's, there's elite levels of players. And very few people play in all-star games and all NBA teams and, and certainly at elite levels. And anytime you get a chance to get somebody that levels you up, then you got to pay attention to that. So Dallas is one of those teams that have one of those players, and maybe he would have been available and maybe Dot. And I'm going to follow every lead out. Uh, for, for the trades we got done yesterday, there's probably, I can't even tell you how many that didn't get done, you know, um, or, or yeah, we talk about it. And usually what happens at trade deadline, and we'll revisit it in the summer. You know, years ago with Antoine Jameson at, at trade deadline, we were talking to Dallas. They were, he was the sixth man of the year. They, he wasn't fitting in there. And, and uh, we maybe we're going to trade for him at deadline. We didn't. But in the summer, we remembered that. We re-engaged re, re with Dallas on that deal. Antoine came here and the rest was history. So there's some, there'll be some uh, re-engaging in the summer, some trade ideas that maybe didn't go through here. Matt Paris. Thanks. Um, Tommy, just uh, what, do you, um, what do you think contributed to uh, the, the fall off from the strong side? I know you said you weren't gonna go 10 and three after every 13 game stretch, but what do you think kind of led to the, the circumstances that you guys are in? I'm sorry. What, what was just, the first part of your question? Somebody. Just, in oh, sorry. What do you think led to kind of this trade deadline in terms of the, the record being what it is after starting strong? What do you kind of attribute to that drop off? Uh, we, we just we fell off defensively and that caused a lot of stuff. I, I kind of mentioned earlier that COVID was a big buck kicker. Losing some players is tough. Integrating two new players was tough. None of those are excuses. They're just facts. But you can kind of follow the tra tra trajectory of our defense. Uh, we, we, we lost a lot of games. We lost seven games that really had no business losing. We certainly we were one thing we were very good at is winning close games. I think we're one of the best teams in the league in three point games. And uh, to be in that position means that you're, you're doing something. And there's seven losses that kind of stick out in my mind. And you could probably guess most of them where, hey, we, had, we, we, we weren't 100% focused at the end of the game, maybe in the third quarter, you know, momentum changes that, that you, you have games that just, you know, that's the game we're going to talk about in April. You know, usually the NBA season comes back to a, a cold night in February with nobody in the stands, and hey, that's the most important game. you got to win that game. 
And some nights you win them, and, and but the ones that you don't, they tend to stick with you for a little while. And I try to have that that 24 hour rule. Once the sun comes up, you can't talk about that game anymore. But they do. Uh, I think they stick with players a lot, especially your top players. They're expected to deliver every single night. And I watched, you know, going back to chemistry, there was a couple of questions ago about players. You know, I pay attention to to how they respond, especially after losses. And, you know, I saw Bradley taking an awful lot of blame on himself. And, uh, you know, I had to mention to him, hey, my, 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 my 10-year-old said you, put, you said that you played like, you know, he said a bad word. And he said, Dad, I didn't think Bradley played that bad. And I said, but Bradley has a high standard for himself. And, and but seeing him, kind of chastise himself, you know, that just kind of is, it's an indicator how hard losses can be on guys and how much they take that responsibility for the team's success on themselves. And I got to relieve that. We got to alleviate that. We got to share the, the, the losses. They're not all on one person. It's not all on one play. But I think that's what we're using this year with Wes, his first year as a head coach. We're really trying to strategize, hey, what's our standard? What's our non-negotiables? Because these scars this year will help us down the road. You know, this is a big picture. We weren't going to get the OB this year. I'm going to break that to you. But we want to get that one day. And it's been done in D.C. before, so we know it can be done again. But to get there, you have to have things that are, I hate to say non-negotiables, but you have to have a standard for how we're going to go every single day. And these losses, that let's get something valuable out of them. Don't waste a crisis. Let's go back and watch the film. And I give Wes credit. After that Clipper game, which I said I'm never going to mention again, but for sake of this call here, I, I will. You know, we watched the whole second half as a team. And we watched it. And everybody saw it, that it wasn't just one person's fault and it wasn't just one play. It's the collective. And I think those, those kinds of lessons are valuable. And, again, I can't say enough. Scars propel you forward towards success if you learn from them. And just how general, generally, kind of how hard is it to break – past kind of the, the middle of where you guys are in the standings. I mean, you've been aggressive in the past, Russell Westberg, you know, it still kind of leads to the same spot. Just how do you, what do you think is kind of required to take that, that next jump? I, I think everybody's different. Every team in the league is different. You know, the other night when, when Phoenix was through here and talking to their staff, I'm really friendly with Monty and those guys that, you know, talking with Devin Booker, you know, I don't know, Matt, you tell me, when was Devin Booker in the playoffs before last year? Right now. I mean, right? So one player hard. can come in and change the franchise, right? And Devin's one of the best players in the league and never been in the playoffs. I'm not picking on him or anybody. I'm just saying there's everybody has their own different path. Everybody has to run their own race. Last year at trade deadline, we were 17 and 32. We made one acquisition. I'm not bragging about it. Anything other than saying one player can't change. And we got to keep adding talent. And, and, and no matter what, we're at deadline. Our record's better than it was last year at this time. And we got to keep making improvements. And, and it's never fast enough, trust me. We're, we're never satisfied. Never. But to get to where you want to go, you have to be willing to take steps and, and not jump steps. And, hey, there's a lot of trades we could have done yesterday. I guarantee we would have been very successful for the rest of this season. It would have cost us forever in the future. I'm not really – I wasn't going to get pot heavy on the rest of this year. If it's if it was going to mess our future up. And now we have opportunity this summer with some of the things we did yesterday to make a lot more moves. And I think that was probably far better than trying to just go gas up our record for the rest of the season and say, see how good we are over a year's time. That's not, that's not what this is about. I appreciate it. Thank you. You're welcome. We'll go over to Glenn Consor. Hey, Tommy. I can't hear you. Can you hear me now? No. No. Oh. How about now? No. Nope. Ah. Of course I can hear you, Glenn. You can hear me now? He's got you, Glenn. All right. Um, hey, Tommy. Um, looking at the strategy of, you know, making moves during the trade deadline and looking at players and targeting players, um, you know, getting Porzingis, and Dave and I talked about this a little bit last night, on, on the air is intriguing because it makes us really big. And, um, you know, you look at a team, how much looking at Cleveland with their size, like Jared Allen and, um, you know, Evan Mobley and Kevin Love and, and, and all those guys, and they've really changed things to, you know, maybe getting away from small ball. But 
it's intriguing to me with Porzingis now in the mix with Kuz and Gaff and, and, and Thomas Bryan in there. Um, you know, how much did looking at Cleveland influence that move to target Porzingis? Well, certainly you acknowledge the teams that you have to beat within your conference uh, and, and what do they do and, and how do you mitigate their strengths and how can you, you know, in, increase our chances to win against those types of teams. And they, they are, they're a long team. We've had some success against Cleveland this year, but certainly they're ahead of us in the rankings. And I think John Blair's done a, JB has done an unbelievable job there uh, with them. But for us, you know, we're, we're just trying to do what's best for the Wizards. Having Porzingis certainly does, to, to your point, gives us a lot more length, uh, the ability to score inside out, his versatility. Uh, you know, he's certainly not somebody we're going to park in the corner and, and just ask him to space and shoot threes. I think he's a lot more dynamic than that. And I think Wes has some great ideas already of how we can get he he and, and our backcourt guys to, to do a lot more cutting and working together to get easy buckets. I think him and Bradley will be fantastic in the two-man game. We're looking forward to tinkering around with that kind of stuff. But um, you're right, Glenn. You look around, you see what the competition's doing. But for us, it comes back to what, what's best for the Wizards. We, we do have a lot more athleticism along our front line than we did a year ago, for sure, especially at the start of last season. And, and you yeah. mentioned um, earlier about... You well, know, I wasn't finished, the, but go ahead. The importance of um, player development and bringing back Ish as someone who could mentor some of these guys. Um, how, I mean, that, that, to me, that's really impactful. I just wanted to get your thoughts on that as well. Yeah, you know, there's like... There's a few people in the in the world actually, you know, you, you think about Pele and Madonna and then Ish, right? They they only have to use their first name and everybody knows right away who they're talking about. It's just a great person, a happy, happy gym when he's in the gym. And uh, I think your leadership point about Ish is is spot on. We know he can jump out there and help us uh, in manage games and do a great job with whatever the role is thrown at him. But certainly uh, I think he, he can really bring a lot of, of joy to the gym. And that was my goal, honestly, at the beginning of the season, after everything the NBA has been through, kind of shoehorning three seasons into, you know, 18 months and, and three drafts, three free agencies, all that stuff within a 12-month period or whatever it was. You know, this is what we do. We love it. But it was a grind. And we wanted to recreate joy this year. And I think we were along those lines. But joy can't just define you by your record. It has to be every day and having people – pulling on the same rope and everybody having the same goals and, you know, taking the good with the bad and stuff like that. And it is one of those people. I don't know that I've ever seen him had a bad day. And um, that certainly rubs off on everybody. And I know our players, our staff, our media, everybody, I think they're excited, you know, and that speaks well to him and, and who he is. But I, we brought him here to play. He's a good player too. And I think that'll help us get easier buckets, get that second unit organized. And, uh, you know, certainly – He'll probably talk to you once or twice. Thank you. We'll go to Yaron. Um, hi, Tommy. Um, you talked uh, a little bit about the young players. Uh, what did you see, or, or I would say yesterday, uh, did the amount of touches for Denny, was that something you thought about uh, uh, after the Bradley Beal uh, situation and, and just all the, the trade deadline? Well, I think I mentioned earlier on this call that there's going to be opportunities when, 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 when one person leaves, somebody else has to fill that void. And that's something, you know, going back to as long as I've watched Denny, I always knew he's not just me, anybody that watches basketball, one of his good characteristics, is he's a great secondary playmaker. And, and especially last night where, you know, G League two-way players were out on the court getting minutes, there was opportunities to be had. And so, yeah, certainly, uh, you know, Denny's going to, he'll, he'll touch the orange a little bit more and we expect him to, to continue to get better. What I was happy about is our turnovers were way down last night, and, and I think they'll continue to do that. We take care of the ball, share the ball. I was proud of the assist numbers that we had last night, how many people did, were able to do some work with it. And, uh, you know, Kuz getting his first uh, career triple-double, you know, I, I think that speaks well to how many different people on this team are, are focused on, on sharing the ball. And Denny, one of those guys for sure. Thank you. Neil? Hey, Tommy, good afternoon. Um, in conversations that you've had with Brad, you know, 
since he's gotten out of surgery, I guess, what have been some of his initial thoughts about, you know, the acquisitions that you guys have made? Um, I talked to him after he got out of surgery yesterday. I mean, he's excited. And anytime you get better, you know, I think it's, it's something. And, it's, you know, he's a pretty savvy guy. And again, I'm pretty transparent. I laid stuff out to, to anybody that will listen before we get into trade deadline. You asked me what we're looking for. Uh, we executed our plan. Right? I mentioned before we wanted to get draft capital, get trade exceptions, get better talent. And certainly after Brad's injury, we weren't looking to send out players, send out draft capital unless it got us better. And we were able to do the, the first part, you know, check all those boxes. The hard part is people have to go, you know, and, and I, I said it before. I'll say it again. Trez is one of my favorite players we ever had through here. Aaron Holiday, we've been trying to get Aaron forever. Spencer was a big free agent last summer. He was one of the top free agent point guards in the league. He, he jumped on with us. Davis, you know, that was one of our first significant trades. I wasn't even the GM when we made that trade. And uh, that was a big signing for us when we did it at the time. And, you know, those things, I don't take that lightly. It's hard to say goodbye to those people. But my job is to make the Blizzards the very best place it can be. Show business, not show friends. We talk about that often there, and we have to live that. So I think Bradley understands anything. Hey, Bradley understands, coach understands that the only constant is change. We're going to move players around to keep getting, trying to get better. And the results will have to speak for themselves. But, uh, you know, I, I talk a long time here on this call and I apologize, uh, probably lack of sleep more than anything. But to me, it's all what's actions. It's not about words. You know, if you go back to anything we've mentioned since we started to this date, uh, we're not going to be afraid to take swings. We're not going to be afraid to try different things. And certainly we're, we're all focused on the forward of, of what's best for the Wizards and where we want to go. And we're not going to skip steps. And we're not going to just try to juice stuff up to, to get a couple extra wins at the end of the year and look good and whatever that is. It's, it's all about the bigger picture. Thanks, Tommy. We have just a little bit of time left, so we will finish up with Chris Miller. Hey, Tommy, you talked about what Ish can kind of bring to the locker room and bring joy back in there, but his pace is elite. Um, we've been accustomed in this town for 12 years watching really fast point guards. Do you see that as an ability for this team to find easier shots as you guys close out this season, potentially qualifying for the playoffs? Uh, certainly. And I'm going to tell you this, we, we've had a lot of shots. We just hadn't seen a lot of them go in, you know, this season. I'm being being sincere. We have some great shooters. It just It's one of those years, you know, we got to get used to how can we adjust. And, and to your point, pushing the ball, you know, Wes is all in favor of pace, but really our biggest key focus, one of our biggest performance indicators is going to be efficiency. And is it efficient? And is his baby, he had, he, he, he's able to straddle that line of pushing the ball, but making sure we get good shots. And, you know, that year that Davies was, uh, was so elite, you know, Ish had the most assist to, to Davies um, that season, you know, so certainly he knows how to feed shooters. And I think all the shooters here are excited. The guys that can't shoot are excited because they think they can shoot now because Ish will get them shots. But I think you saw an effect last night of, you know, we, we had some, some, duplicity at some of the, the roster spots. There's no question, you know, and, and I think Neto played last night the way that we were used to seeing him play previously. Maybe there was a little bit of looking over your shoulder. I don't know. I, I just know Ish will be able to help that second unit. Neto has, has been a starter before and he can take those minutes. And certainly we're looking for other options, opportunities to get better. Uh, still, we have an open roster spot. I was really proud of Cassius Winston stepping up last night and using those minutes and representing the go-go. You know, he's trying to find his path. He's a two-way player trying to make it in the NBA. You only get thrown out in the water every now and again. And he did it, and he did a good job, I thought. That was a big three. You know, Kyrie tricked him in the one time, but he, he was able to learn from that. And I just think there's, there's, there's growth everywhere. I'm really proud of what the Go-Go's doing as well. And we've seen some great success stories coming out of there and the development there. So, you know, we, we just keep pushing forward. And do you see you guys attacking the buyout market? Attacking. No. You, you look at every opportunity to get better. A, a lot of players, you know, by the time they bought out, I'm going to let you know a little secret. They're not buying out and then going and trying to find a job. So there's probably a lot of prearranged marriages going on as we speak. 
but uh, you know, if something makes sense, we'll look at it for sure. All right, Tommy, thank you very much for your time. We appreciate it. Thank you all for being here. Have a great weekend.